All right, uh, greetings everyone. This is Bomani Tamba. Welcome to our Africa for the Africans uh, conference call. Today's date is January 13th, 2019. Happy New Year to everyone. And uh, this year we have our three uh, incredible journeys to Africa. Uh, we have Ghana, May, and December 2019. Then we also have South Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and uh, Botswana. And that's for November 2019. So all these details we're going to go through uh, on, is on our website, africaforafricans.org, which uh, we'll just uh, go through. There's a conference call email that was sent to everyone, and it's just a, it's a general email, and we'll do our best to go through as much as the information as possible, but it's a lot of information, so a lot of things are generalized, and we just point to a lot of reference, and for the most part, um, these calls are for, for a lot more questions than anything else, so several segments of uh, going through the details. I'll open up for questions and uh, then just uh, ask a question and we'll just go through it and answer it as best as possible. Uh, so uh, while you're listening to the call, uh, just jot down as many questions as possible and then we'll uh, go through it. All right, so everyone, let me just give a, just a quick overview background of myself and how we got here doing our Africa tours and investment. I was born in Kingston, Jamaica, October 31st, 1977. Currently 41 years old and been traveling right after we moved from Jamaica in December of uh, 1988. During that time in Brooklyn, I spent uh, several years in Brooklyn and most of that was uh, just doing our junior high school and high school. And during that time frame, this transition from an incredible tropical country I went to a high school called Transitech School, and that's where I was introduced to a world of electrical technology, which I still continue in this uh, current day of you know, making a living doing electrical technology work. I saw a great opportunity for myself in the United States Navy. I got a position as an aircraft technician based on the scores and based on the different options that I had, which was ideal for myself. I spent five years in the Navy and most of the years just spending developing this, learning my craft as a technician and this personal development. Um, after my time ended, I uh, did go to technical school to finish my uh, aircraft certification and that's how I got here to South Atlanta. Got a position at the airlines doing aircraft technology work and that was in 2001. And around 2003, I started being introduced into a world of this pan-Africanism, so which is the point that you know want to really get to. I was reading and studying, um, and I just started doing the same thing and started just you know, learning my roots and culture. And just working for the airlines, you have opportunities to travel, so that was another introduction to uh, traveling. Now the first historic place I went to was uh, Senegal. That started my journey of connecting to Africa in 2004. So after studying in 2003, this, it just became clear that I need to make sure I go to the African continent. And that's where I'm connecting with most people on. Uh, it's just a world of a difference. And if the spirit is calling you to connect to the ancestral roots, it's ideal. But the only issue is that uh, when you're ready to do these things, it's hard to find a tour, a journey to connect you into that world. So once I started uh, traveling, which was uh, Senegal, in uh, Senegal, that was March of 2004, um, I took a lot of pictures and recorded uh, a lot of videos uh, just for this feedback to share with my peers and also just to you know, watch the, the highlights again. It's the same thing um, in April of 2004 when I went to uh, Egypt. And that was just another profound journey to learn about ancient history and then, you know, Senegal, learn about the transatlantic European slave trade and about this, the cultures of uh, West Africa. So after traveling for another year in 2005, going to Senegal, South Africa, and Kenya, that just opened up my eyes more and I'm still in a phase where I'm just uh, studying and trying to just take advantage of the opportunity to travel and just you know, learn about my roots and culture. I did two journeys, uh, one in May and one, and one in November of uh, 2005, and almost the same thing in uh, 2006. Went to the neighboring uh, country of Senegal called called Gambia, and that just remind me, uh, you know, remind me of uh, Jamaica 
and remind me of this, you know, certain upbringings that I came from. So it just really brought a lot of interest. And after this uh, process and all those uh, traveling and going to, then you know, in about flights going to Ghana, this was in 2006 in the, in the summertime after coming back from uh, the Gambia. And then it's really just started looking into Ghana and before it was, you know, it was a country that, you know, heard heard about and I was just still processing. So now this will be the sixth country and I end up going to Ghana for the first time in December 2006. And two months before then, October 2006 is when I started a business called Africa for Africans, uh, LLC, or Africa for Africans Tours and Investment. Uh, so got all the business things uh, set up and started an initial group where it was eight of us, including myself. Uh, most of them were uh, co-workers there at the, the Atlanta airport. Uh, so that ended up being a nice uh, introduction into Ghana. When we, we stayed in Accra and Cape Coast, uh, or I should say Elmina, Cape Coast. And just being there and staying back and then being able to process a few more things, I was able to put together this a nice program to do our annual at that time, Ghana October uh, 2007 tour, which lasted all the way up to October 2015 and then started doing multiple tours per, per year. But I, in that time frame, I did travel to Ghana for 12 straight years, 2006 to 2018, 15 journeys, and I've taken 360 different brothers and sisters from the African diaspora, uh, mainly from Black America and the Caribbean and, and also different parts of the world, one or two people. So that's uh, the, the, the tour that we specialize in, and it's 100% uh, black uh, roots and culture tour. The hotels, the transportation, the setup, the restaurants, everything that we have there in Ghana. Uh, and it was something that uh, proudly put together to increase the energy of supporting black-owned business and for us to work together to build what we need to build for ourselves in the business world. Um, and especially since um, you know, Ghana is one of those countries where there's a lot of Ghanaian hotels, but also there's a lot of um, foreign hotels also, so sometimes, you know, so you do have the options, you know, you have the Merit brand and Hilton brand and all those things, but uh, as far as this journey, that doesn't work with that. We only use those brands when we're in a situation when, when we don't have, you know, we don't have a nice cultural African brand to use. Like in South Africa, I don't have those connections and even my network there, they explain the same thing too, for us to use the brand that we chose, which is a Pratia brand. Um, which is, I think, is owned by Marriott now. Um, but nevertheless, uh, this uh, journey that we have for Ghana, you know, it was just designed with all of the, the, the hardcore elements of us repatriating, living, and doing business there in Ghana. So predominantly the tour that we do um, is I try to go to other countries, but that's where my heart and soul and the focus of us building a pan-African community and doing all the things that we want to do. Uh, but as you know, time go along and we expand the business naturally, uh, and as I build more connections to different parts of uh, Africa, especially since I have more and more people that I used to know here that are moving and they're setting up business there, and just the trust and the history is already behind that, so it's easy to connect and do business. Uh, in Ghana, I just literally had to build everything from the ground up. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it's... You know, something that uh, we do beyond this tourism or business is really to this to get us connected on the continent and you know and be able to this you know, create some opportunities for ourselves, especially for those of us that are you know that see you know see a future outside of America and those of us see the, the trends, uh, not stand, telling people that you should move to Africa and leave America because realistically. It's not for everyone, and it's, it's not a setup that's built to work for everyone. It's just really based on what you're looking for. And, you know, for myself, 10 years in the world working from the military to the airlines, and then from, from 18 to 28, then being at that agency, and, and I've learned a lot to where I can just get into business for myself, and it was always built around us connecting to Africa. So this is uh, the sum that continued us to do this from that time frame, and it's been nonstop. So it's it's been more and more my focus as trying to manage um, you know manage the multiple tours and the different things that you know people want you to do. All right. Uh, nevertheless, um, so what we have come to after the success of Ghana tours, I've been to to Ethiopia and we did have a journey on there set for Ethiopia which didn't work out 
uh, did do a nice uh, journey to Brazil. But uh, as far as the next uh, country that we're going to be doing, since I got one of my coworkers, a good friend of mine, that's there, and he has a nice tour business that he has set up, and he's been you know, he's been doing tours for a few few, few other people. And I thought it was a perfect thing to you know head back to South Africa this November, which we're going to be talking about in a little bit, and also possibly a setup to where we can just, even if we just do South Africa alone, just try to go there every you know, go there at least once a year in in the fall. And I got a new fresh schedule for Ghana in December, so that's the first time I'm going to be using that schedule. So we see how that works. As I'm looking to make May, November, and December be just months that we do our tours, especially since flexible options for people that's in a school system, whether it's the university or you know, you know, public school. All right, so everyone, what I'm going to do is continue on to our website. Africa for the Africans.org. And once you get to uh, the website, if you're on your desktop, your laptop, um, you'll see MP3 play on the left. And if you enable Flash, you can listen to the, the audio. And the same thing, there's a slideshow of just some previous photos from the older tours. That uh, once you click on, once you enable Flash, uh, you'll see the streaming of photos from many different countries um, and tours before really started doing this uh, business. So it's just showing this, my experience as traveling around the black uh, world. And it does have, it does have a description of this list of all of the countries. Um, when you look to um, the left side of the page and that's where you see a long main menu. And the web designer's website is, it was this idea just to create a long main menu um, that way the list of tours can show directly with you know, directly right away. So for those who are traveling with us uh, uh, this year, the links are there for Ghana tour December 2019, South Africa, Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe November 2019, and Ghana tour May 2019. And they still got the previous links for the 2018 tours, uh, which are removed soon. But all three of those links are set to where 100% of the tour information are set. So the most important thing on there to read is the general terms, the itinerary, the tour overview, and that will give you clarity of what's included, what's not included, the price package for the tour itself, and then single supplement, and you know, and then just a list of this what's not included, and then all three of them have a $50 group tip, which we collect to use to take care of the people who take care of us for the logistic operations and the people who entertain and not serve us in general. All right, so let me click on uh, South Africa, Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe, November 2019. All right, the main focus of um, uh, this tour is South Africa. We're set to be there. We leave November 22nd, get there the 23rd, and we're there to November 30th. Now that's that's giving you uh, three full days in Cape Town and three full days in Johannesburg. Now the sequence of us moving around in Ghana, we just strictly once we get into the country, we're using ground transportation uh, and our tour bus. Uh, but in South Africa, we're going to be flying from like, flying from Johannesburg to Cape Town and then back to Johannesburg. And then when we do that uh, connection to Zambia, we're going to be flying from Johannesburg to Zambia. Okay. And as far as most of the driving around is going to be just directly there in South Africa when we do the first uh, two days. So we have it set to do a full Johannesburg and Soweto tour and also look to go out to the uh, cultural village. So those are all arranged as the best sequence as we can just to give you a good feel of uh, South Africa. In the future, what we do is probably expend the time in Johannesburg and then go to one of, one of the uh, safari setups uh, there and then just, you know, work it out in the schedule. But since, you know, we have a chance to go to Botswana, it's just incredible doing a river and land safari, which it provides. Uh, so I'm not going to go full detail all the things that we have set up uh, for here. just want to go through it. But the, the main thing is the South Africa portion is optional. I mean, is, uh, is standard, and the Zambia 
Zimbabwe and Botswana is optional. So if you just wanted to just go to South Africa alone and and work with that uh, price, that's absolutely fine. We could definitely work that out uh, to its. Uh, it could it could be done, and it, it it breaks it off on that tenor where it just shows people who are going back to America that's interest. They can just go back, and it shows where we just go to. We go to Zambia. So the main thing is definitely to make sure you read through the full itinerary of those tours because I have um, all the flights scheduled and the full sequence as best as you know we move around, uh, you know, from leaving in the morning to getting back in the evening, and that's you know that's always my goal for all of the uh, tours. Now let me just give you just a quick overview of what's uh, included in the uh, um, the tour package in general South Africa. Transportation and tours throughout uh, South Africa, uh, Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe. If we have people that's going to be volunteering for one exercise and meditation, um, they'll be out and we'll just, you know, we can join them. Other than that, uh, we can just free exercise. Uh, daily continental breakfast, uh, lunch, and gourmet dinner. So all three meals are paid for. Three and four star hotel accommodations, uh, double occupancy, and all three lodging that we have. Uh, we're staying at the uh, Tia uh, Hotel um, brand, which I uh, was saying earlier that is um, bought out by the Marriott. That's a um, you know, nice little setup to give you a comfortable stay in uh, South Africa. So the flow of this itinerary is very, you know, very nice and a lot more luxury than you know, than culture. But it's you know, the flow of South Africa, just like when we do other countries, it's just really based on the flow of those countries. Uh, uh, like the Ethiopia itinerary is just completely different. Uh, yeah. Like I've never seen an itinerary with uh, so many churches on it, but they were like historical churches. Now we don't have a true business and investment conference network in, in South Africa, but I do have some good networking, uh, building more relationships with people there that have, that have moved and they're beginning to share more opportunities as far as how it is to live and do business in South Africa. And that's always the goal whenever we put together any itinerary. Just want to connect people to more than just a tour. We want to connect them to the future if they're interested and open to that. Now, entrance, to all, entrance and access to all sites and activities. So anything that we're going into is paid for. So the goal is just to really just create one price to cover everything. And then for those who just may not want to do something and they want to relax back at the hotel, that's absolutely uh, fine. And also the, the main thing to know about Zambia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe is we're going to be there for four days, but uh, we're staying in Zambia. And the uh, visa, which is about 50 or 60 US dollars, we'll get to go to Zambia. When we get to the airport, we'll be able to fill it out, visa and arrival. That visa is also good for a one day in Botswana, which we do the, the safaris, and then one day also Zimbabwe. So while we're there, we're just going to cross over and, you know, one day, one country, cross over another day to another country. Uh, so that's the ideal of just going to that location. You know, it's literally bordered by four countries. And then uh, as far as South Africa, uh, since we're staying, we're not staying for more than 90 days, um, there's no visa. So those are the process of how the visa work in South Africa. And I went in 2005, it was the same situation. All right, so let me go back on the main part of the South Africa um, and Zambia tour link. So we have general terms, itinerary, South Africa visa, and visa for Zambia. And the South Africa visa link is just giving you clarification why you don't need a visa for South Africa. All right, so perfect. So. I'm going to stop and open things up for questions, uh, especially if um, you have questions of, in reference to our South Africa tour. And also on Facebook, I have a uh, group for South Africa and Zambia, which uh, if you travel with me and you're not in on that group, you can always uh, send me a message in Messenger. Uh, but uh, once you on uh, Facebook, you just type in the title of our tour. South Africa and Zambia, November 2019. And let me just pull that one up real quick. All right, cool. 
So I have the entire tour name spelled out. South Africa, Zambia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Roots Tour, November 22nd to December 4th, 2019. And this, I just have a few people so far. So you can go there and you can, you, know, you can add yourself as a member and then they'll send me a friend request and I'll accept it. Or you can send me a message saying you're not in the group and I'll just add you. But that's one of the ways I'm looking to this update the details like conference calls, um, pictures, videos, just any kind of information in this. And then later on, before we go, we just create like a WhatsApp group. Uh, so that's you know, using different ways to keep us uh, connected. All right, so if anyone have any questions, uh, just press star six to unmute yourself. And right now we just uh, went over this introduction and went over the uh, South Africa part of our conversation for the night. All right, so no questions about what I went over. All right. All right, does anybody have any questions in general? I'm getting ready to uh, talk about the uh, Ghana part of our presentation and open things up back for more questions. And remember, it's uh, star six to mute and unmute yourself. All right, so uh, I'm back on the uh, main menu of our website, africaforafricans.org. Uh, uh, once you scroll down to the main menu, you'll see uh, the other two are uh, Ghana Tour, Ghana Tour May 2019 and December 2019. Once you click on a link, it's virtually the same information. Only thing that's different is um, one tour is 13 days, which is May, and that's for 3,700, and one is for 11 days, which is December. And that one is uh, thirty-five hundred dollars, and that's the big difference is just the two days that we're not gonna do in Takarati uh, in December. Other than that, uh, everything else in the tour is the same. And Takarati is in the western region of Ghana, and that's one of the few regions in Ghana that I haven't been to. So, as you create different tours, you just try to create opportunities to go to different parts of Ghana. But uh, in December, the Price of everything is a lot higher, so it's best to just do a shorter tour. The full flow of the itinerary is up, and the links to where we stay and everything is all there. All right, so I'm going to click on a tour overview. All right, and it's the same flow of uh, what's included: uh, transportation um, and tours throughout uh, Ghana. Uh, daily content of breakfast, gourmet dinner. This one does not include uh, lunch, so both the Argana tours, lunch is not included. Uh, this one also has name and ceremony and ancestral celebration. Uh, same thing, hotel accommodation, double occupancy. Uh, we have a repatriation and business and investment conference slash networking there at the beginning of the tour. And entrance and access to all the sites and activities are included. Now, in the four days that we're going to stay in Accra, I didn't have on the last tour, is we're going to uh, Prom Prom, New Ningo, and that's where we have the memorial wall of 90 large portraits of our ancestors. And this is a good friend of mine, uh, Jerry Johnson. Uh, we'll, we'll go to his house, and we'll go to one or two other people's house from the African diaspora that lives in that area. And we just um, keep you uh, connected. But that's one of the newest part of the tour that I have in Accra as I start doing four days. That way, once you get into the country, you know, at least you have a few days in the country before you have to move and go to Kumasi. And other than that, we have the standard things that we've been doing, a uh, full city tour, including W.E.B. Du Bois Center, George Padmore Library, uh, Kormin Kuhn Memorial Park, the Culture Center. Then another day, we go up to the, you know, we go up to the, the mountains, uh, orphanage uh, school that we go to. Uh, we go, and then in Tutu Mountains, and the main part is Avery, where we go to the Botanic Garden, and also the uh, Woodcarving Village. And Kumasi, what I have now, also is a standard three days, and it's the same for both uh, tours. Um, the first four, four days in Accra, next three in Kumasi, uh, in the same exact order. And the flow of Kumasi, we spend one day, we go to the cultural villages, and then another day we go to the uh, Ashanti Palace, uh, and that just gives us flexibility to, to, to make our way around Kumasi to where we end up getting back to the hotel earlier than later, 
and then on our way to Kumasi, we'll go to the university as every main part of Ghana we go to. We have it set to just go to uh, the main university. It's like in Accra, when we leave from the mountains, we go back to University of Ghana. Yeah, once we uh, finish our three days in Kumasi, uh, without, we head out to Takarate Sekandi. And this is just a two-day breeze through. We don't have much of anything on the other than uh, sightseeing and you know, sightseeing and us uh, going to one or two uh, historical places that were set during colonial times. And also learn about business and development in that era because Takarate represents another main area of business development. And that's where you have the next um, main port of Ghana. One is in Tema, one is in Takarate. And then we're going to finish off like we've been doing the last uh, several years uh, at uh, Elmina Cape Coast. And that is set uh, three days. And the main thing uh, is we're going to do a hotel split. I got, have half of us staying at the Carrick Hotel. The Carrick Hotel has AC, hot water, and TV and things like that. Uh, one Africa Resort doesn't have those. I will be staying at One Africa Resort, and that's where I've always stayed at. Um, it, it's fine for me for three days. It is something that we originally put on that itinerary as we build business with Sis Imacus to give you a more, you know, to add a, all of the, you know, the, the, the hotels and things you're going to, at least set it to where we can enjoy a tropical resort. So once again, One Africa does not, she has a fan in the room, but there's no AC, there's no hot water, and there's no TVs in the room. Uh, for those who absolutely do, do not want that experience, you know, naturally I just want people to just you know, send me a little email and say I want to stay at the Carrick Hotel or the other hotel. Um, and it's said to where both hotels are in walking distance. Uh, so that's what I was able to just do the, do the last time. I just went over there and talked with them and told them that we just don't have enough room for to stay at One Africa. And you guys are much closer and your hotel is brand new and for the people who want hot water and AC, at least you can bring them there and just do a short little walk and get them over. And it's, you know, the bus will go from one Africa to the other hotel or vice versa. Uh, so it's something we have to do over the last few years as we have had bigger tours in the 30s and 40s, which put us out of range of one Africa because I'm because only have 12 rooms. So you can really fit about 24 people. Right. And the Mabel's Table is another hotel na na nearby, but it's a little older, and you know, since we have a new option, just put people in a new hotel. So that's one of the uh, main things we want to be clear with everyone on. Uh, but this tour is set for more experience than anything else, uh, roots, culture, and you know, One Africa has the beach right there. We'll, you know, we'll do a few things on the beach. Um, we'll go to the African Holocaust Dungeons, uh, Cape Coast, and not Elmina. To a Coma Academy school, uh, which will donate school supplies and financial donations. Uh, also, we have a canopy walk, which you know, it's one of, something I don't ever recommend to anyone unless you physically fit and ready to do something like that. Um, hike up into you know, the forest and across several canopies. I have videos of it and, you know, just to show people what that experience is. But um, a lot of times we have sometimes people who may not necessarily be clear that it's, you know, it's, you, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's physically challenging. And if you're not in the best health or shape, sometimes you may want to avoid it. But nevertheless, if your spirits say you want to do it, we're not going to leave you behind. Uh, we'll always have one or two people stay behind and, help up other, other folks that need a little help. Because some people, they just, you know, they're ready to go and cross and run. Um, but that's where we do in the, uh, just try to add a little bit uh, roots, culture, education, and things to the itinerary, make it as fun as possible. But that, that's literally our standard itinerary uh, that, we're gonna, that we're doing in May and then December. The same exact itinerary minus the two days in Takarate, which is not much of, you know, not much of anything that's being missed. Uh, so once you um, once you go back on the, the main menu on the uh, website and click on the tour link or click on the tour link icon at the top of the uh, articles, it will just take you back to the list of um, articles for that tour. So we have other things. Uh, 
have the full visa information, but if you're traveling to Ghana with me and you need visa information, you'll send me an email and I'll send you the visa email. The visa email will have my sample application, and if you, which if you want to, if you like typing it instead of writing it, you can just edit mine uh, you, you, by using Adobe Acrobat and save it, or you can just you can just edit a regular you can just edit it from regular PDF, but you just can't uh, save it, and you can just print it off. So that's the option of you know, what I set up where I type everything in. Other than that, when that email is sent to you, I just recommend everyone print out the email and then make sure everything is clear, start getting everything together. And the main thing is you have to put a prepaid return envelope and everything needs to be filled out, including your return address. Uh, I have it set up to where once you read through it, you follow the exact information. It takes no more than uh, seven to ten days to, you know, for you to send it off and get it back. The when you have one or two little mistakes that delay it. So I always tell everybody, do your visa two months before we leave. And the only thing that you won't see in that uh, visa email is a flight itinerary. So everyone that has quote unquote, quote unquote uh, confirmed on the tour, paid a deposit, I reserve, I have reserve a ticket with our Delta Group booking for you. And in so with the information that they send, I copy it over and I create a flight itinerary, which you can use to submit with your um, visa process application. All right, on that um, list of on the, the uh, Ghana tours, uh, you're also going to have tour preparation with the pack, Ghana culture and customs, improving your immune system, which is something I highly recommend people look at. Uh, one of the biggest issues is do our best to encourage everyone to drink water and make sure that you know your body is ready to ch you know for that uh, short journey uh, to Ghana. You know, it's a little different from you know four season of climb, but the, the the main thing is you know is you want to stay uh, hydrated, and you know you want to to not just like stuff yourself with everything. Uh, so for me, it's simple. I usually eat around the same thing and drink lots of water. And I'm never really eating off the street or doing anything of that nature. And you know, so you just follow basic uh, protocols and you'll be fine. Um, the fruits and the vegetables are fine. Um, we'll provide our bottled water. We'll usually just put our money together and just buy an unlimited amount of bottled water so everyone can just have access to water. You can take as much up to your room and have as much on the bus or, you know, during the daytime. And then towards the end, I have a departure and reminder list, and that list is usually uh, comprised of um, all of the need to know, things that you need to be reminded of, uh, things that you just don't want to forget. Uh, just have it on that list. And whenever we get closer to the tours, like two months, three months out, I usually just go through this list you know, word for word and just try to answer as much questions in reference to it. But it's something that's very helpful when you're packing and you're traveling, especially if you're not used to doing these kind of movements the kind of movement where you want to make sure that you have everything together organized for your travel before you go. All right, so family, that's um, an overview of our Ghana tour information. That's for May and December of this year, 2019. And then once you scroll down to the main menu, you'll see a link that says Ghana tour books, and that's literally the, the book, the full program book. It's an 88 um, half book size, 8 by 5 and it literally is your introduction to the tour itself. It's, it goes through every aspect of the tour and every day of what we're doing. Um, and that way you don't have to you know, move around with a bunch of paper. You just have a book with your itinerary in there and all your other tour information, including business and investment and so on. So we always recommend everyone make sure you just read through the itinerary the, next, the night before. That way you clear what we do in the morning. So we can avoid having questions, everybody asking us what we do and what we're doing today. And then once we get back on the bus, naturally what we do is we tell everybody what we're doing for the day. And then when we get off the bus, we tell everybody what we're doing for the rest of the day and for the next day. So it's, you know, so it's, a, it's a situation where we just have the book as a reference. When we go into things, maybe we go, maybe we go through affirmations or certain things or telling people about exercise and meditation. So it, it's, a, you know, it's a good reference uh, you know, guide on, on the actual tour that you're traveling with. And uh, below... Uh, the uh, tour books, uh, which is a good thing to check out because not much really changed in them. We have the conference call link where I just do my best to update uh, when we're having a conference call 
and the link to the recordings and things like that. Uh, collecting school supplies and financial donations for the children of Ghana. So once you click on this link, it just gives you a list of school supplies. If you're interested in bringing school supplies or if you're just interested in bringing a financial donation, just bring what you, you know, want to bring. recommend putting school supplies in one bag. That way, once you get the school supplies away, you can have more space to, you know, to get things that you need. And then below um, that link is a few more support links, but the main information that we have is right in the top link. And once you pass the main menu, it does have a few other things, uh, the link for YouTube and Facebook. And YouTube represents um, my collection of videos, 1,500 videos, at least, at least 1,300 is on Ghana alone. Um, then you have other countries, Ethiopia and uh, Brazil. And once you get to the, uh, the YouTube page, literally give you access to all of the uploads, the Ghana Tour November 2018 highlights uh, and the um, May highlights. But then when you click on playlists, you literally see all of the playlists because I have so much different videos that, this, I've, that over the last few years I've begun to start putting them in more category than anything else. Especially, you know, like I have one that's for Ghana Tour conference calls and interviews. So once we do a conference call and we edit it, I just upload it to that upload it to YouTube but also I'll put it in that playlist and the same thing for a different aspect of what we do on a tour tour member feedback school presentation a business conference um, black consciousness anything that you know we do videos for us try to do that so it's a bunch of different playlists and there's you know, there's one place I have one which is one of the biggest playlists which is it's called the African Holocaust Dungeons in Ghana so what you have is just an incredible amount of videos from Cape Coast and Elmina dungeons that I've collected, um, more so since 2011 to now, as you know, begin to just show what we have as far as the newer technology. Then I have another set of uh, documentation that's on Facebook. Um, I have a f several different Ghana tour pages, uh, one for May, one for December, one for November, one for Togo, Benin. Uh, but they're all there in the search, and you can always send me a message if you're trying to join one of them, and uh, you, you can't find it. And as, as far as Facebook, what I do is just, I'm going to get to start uploading some fresh pictures from the last tour again. Uh, and it's just, once you get on Facebook, you just click on, photo, on my pages, click on photos, and you'll see a list of this, uh, all kind of photos of myself with many other people in and out of Ghana you know, on 15 tours in 12 years. Uh, you click on albums, you'll see a bunch of different um, photo albums uh, for the different tours. You can go all the way back to 2006 and to see you know, what we do. And this is just to show people what kind of operation we do, what we do, what to expect, what to be clear on. That way when you get on the journey, you're clear on it and you, know, you have an idea what to experience. What to, or what to uh, expect that way you know there's no surprises so everything is presented to you in all these means up front as much as possible to give you clarity to make a decision and to be clear on what you're you know paying for and wh who you're dealing with what we're doing so family I want to pause uh, and open things up for questions for any of the tours whether it's uh, Ghana or uh, South Africa so let's press star six to unmute yourself Yes, this is Mac. Can you hear me? Uh, greetings, Mac. Um, go ahead. I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, where are you calling from? Okay. I'm calling from Dallas, Texas. Actually, Lancaster, Texas. It's seven miles from Dallas, Texas. Okay, cool. And I was just calling to see if it was too late to get on the May 22nd journey. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, you can, uh, you can uh, text me your um, email address. And uh, your first and last name, um, you and I can talk tonight or tomorrow, and I'll get you all started. Okay, I, I did uh, email. I did. Uh, I did uh, fill out the uh, information online. I had uh, registered, and I do have a uh, account number uh, with you and everything. Uh, uh, I guess last week sometime, but I was kind of waiting on the answer, but I decided to wait till today to get in on a conference call to make sure you still had room available. 
Yeah, um, yeah, apologize. Yeah, the, when you uh, register, it, 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 it tells you uh, to, um, it tells you to still email and communicate with me, and that way I can get you going. Uh, but yeah, um, thank you for registering. So at least I'll just be able to look back at the registration. Okay. Okay, so you'll get back with me uh, today, tomorrow, uh, uh, to let me know where to go from there. I pretty much read all your information online, so I'm kind of up to date on everything. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't too late. Oh, no, it's not too late. I have space. Um, thinking about getting another bus if we have an influx of people coming. But uh, to get started, uh, um, it's just based on making a deposit and uh, reserve a ticket for you from Dallas uh, to Ghana and back. Okay. And um, all right, so receipt with all the details and you, just, you, know, you and I go through the visa information. So what I also do is I'll send you that visa information. That way you can print okay. it out and start processing it. Okay. That that was my next question because I did see the visa application on your website. And I know it has two areas that you have to list where you're going. And I noticed that you uh, said the uh, Milka, if I'm pronouncing it right, uh, hotel was one of them. And the other one, put your name down on it. Yes, and when, I have a, when you click on that link for the visa for any of the uh, Ghana tours, is it just, at the bottom it gives you the manager for, for the Micklin and the manager for uh, One Africa. And um, the okay. phone numbers and all the stuff is what you put in that form. But um, you know, when I send you the uh, visa email, it will be a lot easier because it will literally be a typed up sample form you know, with all those things typed up already. Okay. Yeah, so, to, okay. so I'll definitely be getting back with you um, tonight, tomorrow morning, the latest. And then we'll okay. talk in detail. Okay, so, sounds uh, great. If you have questions, uh, let me know. Okay, great. I'd accept Mac, well, thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone, the line is open for, if you have any questions for um, any of our tour schedule for 2019. Uh, go ahead. Um, let me get your name and where you're calling from. My name is Bula. When you're traveling, will there be bottled water provided everywhere? or? My goal is to always have unlimited amount of bottled water for everybody to drink as much water as they want to drink on the bus and when they're moving around. Okay. And the safest place to eat are in the hotels or the designated restaurants uh, that, the tour, that the tour recommends. Yeah, exactly. And that's, um, and that's what I can guarantee to get you safe because um, I hold the hotel lab and the, whole, the restaurants that we go to. But if you just get the food off. Okay. So going into someone's home and they offer you food, you can feel free to say no. Oh, absolutely. Say no. I mean, it's, it's, it's another thing where... Now, sometimes uh, people tell you that, uh, you know, when you go somewhere, you, you should always say yes and do this. You know, and, and sometimes, you know, I'm a person very, you know, I, I just, I don't eat, I don't, there's a lot of things I just don't eat. So sometimes people offer me things and I got to honestly tell them no. And, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. people look at you as maybe being rude, but I don't, honestly, I don't feel like you should be forced to eat anything you don't want to eat. Um, and some things it's just, maybe the presentation doesn't, is not appealing. But um, well, we're not in a situation where we go places and your people are giving you things that you know what you're given is things that we have organized for you to have, and the food is going to be. You know, we do our best to make sure that the food is safe and clean as possible, and mm-hmm. less issues. So you you, know, so mm-hmm. you won't have to experience what you're talking about. Right. Are we allowed to bring any type of? I guess we're not food or snacks with us. Packaged snacks or anything. Uh, yes, what you can do is you can package your snacks, and for certain items, you can just package it in your check bags. But uh, yes, you can bring certain things on the flight with you in, in so to Ghana. Okay, all right then. So if I have any more questions, I'll text you. Uh, absolutely, Bula. Uh, good talking with you. Uh, everyone else, uh, the line is still open for questions. And, uh, Hi, um, I have a question. Can you give your name and your phone, please? Yes, um, this is Lidani from Vegas in the Caribbean. Um, um, I, my question is, I noticed that on the website it says that um, the interest and access to all the site activities, that's not included. 
in the in the price that we're paying, and I just wanted to know, like, do you have an estimate of how much that's going to be? There's only one price of the tour, but, and the price includes everything with the exception of your lunch. Oh, I think maybe it was from the bottom. I see what you mean. Yeah, so tours include and then not include lunch, group tips. Ah, uh, okay. And, uh, okay. I'm oh, sorry. I got. I thought it belonged to the top as opposed to the bottom. Um, for me, like I just have a another question. And I'm not as um big picky, but um I am vegan. Um, would I would I have options available, or should I bring anything in particular? Um, no, you don't have to bring anything in particular. It's um well, most of the people that travel with us are vegan, vegetarian. At least half of the people. So oh, okay, that's good. Doing I'm not really picky. I just, I always say to myself, I find something, but I just wanted to know if I. Yeah, as far as on the, the dinner menu, um, I try to put, I try to put the order of uh, grilled chicken, grilled fish, and put an order of um, uh, everything else, um, uh, side items, and and put like a meat substitute or certain things that the vegans can eat, uh, vegetarians can eat, and then okay, all the perfect. important food as much as possible. But if you get to the point where you see uh, you see a trend of you not getting what you want on the menu, you know you just come directly to me and we can just always make a special order for you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah. But, and same thing as anything else. Just communicate with me directly, and we we'll get I'll get it taken care of for you. Yeah. No. I usually find stuff to eat. Um. Oh, no, it's okay. I was saying, and the videos are up in the website or on your Facebook page? Um, the videos on the, um, the YouTube page. Um, okay, I was On Facebook, okay. it will give you the link, and from the website, it will give you the link. And there are also, okay. there are also videos that are put on Facebook, but those are just few videos, but the whole catalog and everything is there and titled based on okay. the years and the tours we're doing. Okay. Um, another question. Um, I know that we, me and Pablo, put the deposit down for uh, for ourselves. Although we're both coming from different locations, um, when will we know the times that we depart? I depart from Vegas and he from Puerto Rico, just for the sake of like leave for work. Yes, um, I sent you a flight itinerary. Both of you, I sent the flight itinerary immediately. And I did okay, because I think you sent us an uh, an itinerary, but it was just like um, a confirmation for a visa. But I don't know if it had like the time, and it was just for me just a sake of work to know what days I need to ask for and what time. Yeah, and that's the purpose of the flight itinerary: the dates, the time, the flight schedule. Okay. Be like, let me. For me, I would need it at least um 45 days. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not sure if you listen to me. If you listen to me, I'm saying that I sent it to you. It's it oh, was, you sent it. I got it, Romani. I see it now. All right, perfect. Yeah, and then what I'm saying and, is also for for everyone in general. Um, and the last thing I was saying is that we'll make sure that your ticket is paid for in full, and you get a confirmation, and you get also a, a you get a, a, a receipt from Delta Airlines, which I'll send saying that your ticket is paid for and everything is good, and then that, that completes that main part of it, because the main part of, it, of the tour we have is, this, is the ticket, and that's the mo most complex thing, so I try to make sure we take care of it. So I did have it set up to where you and Paul are going to connect to Atlanta. Yes. Yeah. I worked out the connection price for you, so you don't have to pay anything extra. Also, we don't have to pay the, the, oh, the extra. You, the not, 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 not you, but he has to. I couldn't... Uh, so he has to pay the he has to pay the extra three hundred, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, and okay. that's the uh, best as we can do because uh, it's hard to get the ticket from Puerto Rico. The loan is like sometimes anywhere from four to five hundred dollars. But so I got that worked out from that. But as far as yourself, there's no addition. So that's okay. Even though I'm coming from Atlanta, to Atlanta now. Oh, yes, yeah, so you're gonna leave from Las Vegas and connect to Atlanta and meet with me and other people in Atlanta. Okay, perfect. And he will do the same. And then your routing is, is, is set up the same. But also, okay, if you perfect. To stay longer, do anything else, let me know. And that's also for everyone, if you're looking to stay longer okay. or you need something to change on your routing or, or anything in general, let me know. Because while ticket prices are going up, if you need certain changes, it's best to do it now. Because once you get okay. there, 
in Ghana, what they charge is $350 to change your flights if you want to stay longer and things like that. And if there's okay. an extra route charge, they charge that. So it can go to like $400 to change your tickets. Uh, okay. All right, so uh, let me know if you have another question or if everything is clear. Okay, I think I think it was clear. Um, oh, yes, I have an, the last question. I saw that on the email it said that we have to submit all the payment by May 15th. I mean, not May 15th, March 15th. Is that correct? Or is, or, or is as you said, 30 to 45 days before yeah, yeah, we leave? It's, um, it's going to be um, March 15th. And then if we okay. need extra time, we do extra time. But my goal is to try to pay for all of our tickets by April 1st. So by then we'll have enough money okay. for everyone to perfect. pay for the ticket. Yeah, perfect. All right, so uh, let me uh, meet okay. you and answer other questions for other people. Our brother Juma, greetings. Uh, go ahead. The line is open. Hey, brother Bumami. Hey, greetings. Uh, how are you doing today? Man, I'm good. I missed our first couple of conference calls, and I made sure that I caught that with I'm sure that you're going to have other ones uh, prior to May. Yeah, absolutely. We're just going over the same stuff on the website, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and things like that. But, um, yeah, but definitely trying to get some more questions than anything else. Uh, what is your question? Well, well, mine is probably... For me, the most important question that I have is that, and I think you've already told me this, we're not going to go to Elmina Castle, right? Uh, no, but if you want to go, I can get you there. That's not a problem. Well, yeah, because that's probably going to be the most important spiritual aspect of my journey uh, back to the motherland is that I've always wanted to go and see the door of, new, of return as part of a you know, like a, a tradition for that I would tell all African Americans to do when they go back, is to go back and visit the yep. slave castles. So, yeah, that's where I want to go. Perfect. Yeah, we are going to go to Cape Coast, but what I can do for you, uh, the day when we go to the Canopy Walk, which would be the next day, um, instead of, you know, you can just, it's um, Elmina Castle is right in the neighborhood where I'm accustomed to live at. Uh, we can just get um, someone to escort you there. Thank you. I really appreciate that Absolutely. So, you know, especially once we get there, you can, you know, you, you and I can definitely talk about it that way I can just connect you with other people that are that want to do that and experience yeah. that. So that's what I've, because what we used so, to do, I used to do boat dungeons, Cape Coast and Elmina, and it used, it used to kill people, like literally to the point where people, like, started, like, passing out. <laughs> why? Because, number one, you go into the history alone is going to break you down, and then, it's hot in there. Sometimes you're in a cell and the tour guide is talking for 20, 30 minutes. And, you know, that's what, I was, that's what I've been always trying to motivate people to drink more water than anything else. And then, you know, you go in there, you have to make sure you take at least two bottles of water um, because the sun is just going to suck all of that up. Uh, and, you well, know, and then at, at, at some point we felt like we'd be, we were rushing because we were rushing to, to leave from one to get to the next and do, and do, and do lunch. So, it just became easier to give a nice, solid presentation in Cape Coast and then offer optional since we're there for another day. In, um, in yeah, Elmina. I, I, I just think, I think that the option of going to Elmina, the slave castle, is a very important option that I think that most African Americans would want to experience. Hell, we've been through enough trials and tribulations on this continent to be able to deal with a little heat. I mean, that shouldn't be nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The two of them are uh, a great presentation, and that's why I do my best to record all of them in case someone... But yeah, it's one of those days where we literally we literally just try to do our best to get everybody to just look forward to it. And I know sometimes some people decide they don't want to come out this day because maybe they, you know, didn't, they, you know it's just, it, this is also an itinerary where it's not a lot of relaxing time. Uh, and it's right. like that we're up, you know, yeah, so... But... Um, yeah, definitely want to offer that option for those who want to experience that, but at the same time, too, just trying to adjust the itinerary a little bit, which I've been doing the last few tours, because after, like, the first four or five days, people just get burnt out, and people all say that, well, you know, people all say that I'm, because I'm from, you know, I'm, me being from Jamaica does not make, it's not that, is it, 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 it's not the difference making that. It's just, you know, 
I get motivated to go to Africa, and I know I'm not going to see the content sometime for a few months or maybe a year or so. So I try to enjoy every single minute, you know, in the content. Yeah. I want to see everything, even though I've seen it like 15 times already. I want to see it again. I want to see other people experience it. Um, but I still, just, you know, want to just make sure that tenor is flowing a little simpler. And make well, you know, when African Americans go, they're probably still detoxing from their Eurocentric experience. <laughs> so, you know, the, they've been on this continent for so long, they don't got soft. So, you know, what can I say? But listen, I only I had um, on one other thing. I got my passport back and I got my visa. Excellent. So the list of everything that I need to take, um, I can get off the website. I've got friends here from Ghana where I can talk to them right here in Los Angeles, and I'll be talking to a few of them prior to leaving. So everything else I need to know um, is just – only thing I'll have to do is just wait on the airplane ticket to pop up in my email, right? Yeah, absolutely. Then, so and then to catch that flight. 60 days before we leave. As a matter of fact, closer to 60 days, I'll have your login uh, ready and things like that. So. Right. Gotta, and um, how many suitcases do most people travel with? Because, you know, of course, I, I wanted to bring a few things back. All right, perfect. Uh, so it's two 50-pound check bags, and then you have your two carry-ons. Yeah. All right. Two to get stowed away in the airplane, and then if a minimum of two to, to, ca to carry on with? Exactly. So what I use, I use one of those uh, 20 one inch roll on swivel for one of my carry on and then right. I have a, a laptop backpack with you know, all my you know my business stuff is in, in there and that's what I carry every time I move and then I have two fifty pound bags of um you know one is just you know my clothes and things and the other is uh my equipment, you know, things like the the, the uh, stuff the tripods, camcorder lights, um you know, and all the little technical stuff that you know. I don't think I'll need that many carry-ons. I think I'll just take yeah. one. My son has two bags, so I just use one of his bags for school supplies. But that's right. all move around. But uh, I just recommend us to use one bag school supplies, one bag your clothing. You give us the school supplies when you get there, and then you fill that bag up with things that you want to bring back. Okay. Um, you said something about school supplies for the kids, right? Uh, yes. Uh, we're going to three different schools. The last school I didn't mention it's called the Marcus Garvey School. We're going to visit a um, community called Garvey Town, which a few of us are putting our money for plots of land already, which we're going to build into this community. So I have it on my itinerary to go there. And then just you know, go to school, show the children some love, and then you know, show everyone the property and the community we're building. So, so if, if we want, so how would you, how did you, what did you say about the school supplies, about do we make a donation to you, or do we try to get it over there ourselves, or what? All right. Exactly. As far as the financial donation, what you're going to do when you physically go to that, that specific school, you're going to turn in that financial donation right there in front of all of us. You're going to put it in the pot, and then it's going to be given to um, the administrator of the school. Uh, the school right. supplies, we, we can collect, especially for those who are like ready to shop. Like Sometimes people are ready to shop, and, and at the same time, too, you can hold on to it. But I usually ask... I want to kind of split the school supplies into three, and then on the day that we're going to do school supplies, we can, we can compile them into in a few different suitcases and things like that, so everyone not to walk around with additional bag in. Okay. Um, and then I can work out uh, having access to additional funds with my credit union here. Yes. Yeah, so to be able to use it, to be able to use ATMs over there. Yes, everywhere we go, um, we're going to be close to a mall or close to shopping areas where there's an ATM machine. And in the case of Accra and Kumasi, we're right there by the mall, and everywhere we go, we try to make sure – every day we, we do our best to make sure everybody has access to change their money. Uh, and the exchange rate is 4.7 to 1. Um, and you'll get Ghana CDs and use the um, machine itself. But literally, that's something that we have – available every day because sometimes you want to change money today and sometimes somebody else want to do it tomorrow and then it's always that. So we just have it in our mind every day to, you know, to make sure yeah. you have someone that's going to be with us, that's going to assist us with uh, the money exchange to make it a lot easier. Yeah. Now, would I take 
cash on the flight or money order? Oh, yes. Bring as much money as possible with you and just keep it on you. Well, because I, um, when I applied for my visa, I told them I was taking a $1,000. Yeah, and that's fine. And it's just, they're just trying to get an idea of what people spend. I don't know. As far as, um, as, far as that, you can, you can bring as much as you want um, under 10000 because that's what these people set up. If they catch you more than $10,000, they're going to check and question you about where you're moving around that much money. But yeah, you can bring as much money as you need. Um, I used to bring a lot more before I started transferring everything to every owner's account. But um, 1000 2000 to carry around is safe. You're fine. Yeah. Well, you said the operative word is safe. You know, um, what, is, what is that like there if you go, when you go to, to Ghana, I mean, as far as um, being accosted by, you know, anybody there for money? Um, it's only, nothing like America. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's nothing like here. Yeah, the only people you should be giving money to is the people that uh, you're buying things from, but yeah, other than that, you shouldn't be giving money to anybody else. Um, but as far as feeling safe, I mean, that's one of the few places that I feel safe at, honestly, because, you know, I have security with me. I have people that you know, are playing a certain position to look out. And I have, you know, street guys traveling with us when we go to the clubs, move around, because I have too much people around to not have a bunch of other people because I can't watch everybody. Right. I have a lot of, you know, I have a lot of people. But... So we're fine. Usually it's like 20, 30 of us, and you know that's you know you go anywhere in the world, people don't bother 20, 30 people moving, and you know they see some rough guys with us, so we're yeah. good on that end. But I feel <laughs> safe as possible. The hotels I go to, everyone knows in there, and they're honest. They I leave my stuff out in my room, and not telling people they should do that, but um, no one messes with anything, and I just feel safe as you can be safe. That's one reason why I go to Ghana versus other places. Right. Yeah. Okay, so um, is, is, should, we, should I get my immunizations maybe uh, three months prior to the trip? Yeah, it's a good the idea. I would usually recommend two to three months, it's just like the yeah, visa. But as far as immunization, whatever these people are shooting in your body, which I don't know or we don't know a clue what's in the ingredients, at least, in that time frame, it would, pro it, would, it would take its natural process to your body. So, example, if you just take a yellow fever shot t yesterday and then you go on a flight, you never know, you might have adverse reaction and that's the worst place to have issues because at least, you know, when you're here, you can just check yourself to a doctor, go get checked out if you take a yellow fever shot and it just make you feel dizzy or uh, strange for a few days. Well, what do you say? I mean, you should take it before the flight? No, I'm saying you should take those things. They're good for 10 years. You just take them months ahead of time so they can go okay, a right, natural okay. course through your yeah. body. That way, the worst thing yeah. is South Africa, and then you took some medicine in America, and it's making you sick, which does happen. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And there's no kind of uh, pills that, you can, that work internally to ward off mosquitoes. You really have to have a mosquito repellent. <laughs> right? You just have to use like centronella oil, centronella spray, uh, things that, you know, use as natural as possible. But in general, uh, what you don't want to do is put a bunch of sweet stuff on yourself. Sometimes people have these sweet fragrance, and that's the worst thing to put on your body, especially going out in the middle of the night. Uh, yeah, but so we, we have a habit of wearing body oils. So, you know, you want to wear things that's going to repel the mosquitoes more than anything else, but also it's about what you're eating and putting in your body. Right. Yes, because sometimes I look at people and... You know, and they, you know, and you know, some people also about they sweet. That's why mosquitoes bite them. But hey, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not from Louisiana. Only people from Louisiana are probably more used to mosquitoes than I am. So but I have to do whatever I can to try to protect yeah. my beautiful skin. Yeah, that's you know, wear your natural stuff, and you're good to go. But uh, right. Well, I'm good, but not me. Uh, good talking with you, and uh, let me mute you. All right, Mac, uh, your line is uh, open. Uh, you have a question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what the brother was talking about as far as uh, exchanging uh, the currency, uh, is it recommended to bring big bills, like $100 bill, $50 bill, to get a better 
uh, right? Exactly. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, so, uh, would you be able to do that at the airport? Uh, as far as exchange, you'll do that uh, once we leave the airport. Uh, I'll have someone available when we get to the hotel. Okay. All right. So, as far as, uh, well, I guess that answers my question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, excellent, Dan. Um, I wrote your number down, so I'll be giving you a call. For, you know, okay. After we finish the call. All right. Great. Yeah, this is Fatima calling from Jacksonville, Florida. I and, you, Fatima. and on the shots, you only uh, mentioned the yellow fever shot on one of the inquiries. Do you need all of the help, uh, help shots too? Um, no, it, and, and, and it's just being as honest as possible with the situation. About, um, I would actually just recommend that uh, everyone have a uh, you know communication with their doctor and as far as what's, uh, what the additional things you want to take. But the embassy only have it to where they're, they 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 have explained that in their paperwork, saying that they recommend you get a yellow fever shot up on entry to Ghana. Um, but there's nothing else about malaria and things like that. Those are things that usually people decide to do based on maybe other people's situation. Uh, what about those pills that people usually take when they go out of the country? Oh, yes, the uh, malaria pills. The malaria pills? Yes. Uh, are we supposed to take those too? Uh, no, it's not mandatory for any of us to take it. Um, but uh, it's something that is just up to the individual. You know, the only thing that um, I recommend is what the uh, what the embassy recommends is yellow fever. And as far as everything else is following with the health and wellness guidelines that we have, uh, like the article on the website, billing your immune system, uh, things like that, and is following what we recommend um, when we're there in Ghana. And, the host of people that we have there also, they're going to also say some of the same things that I'm saying as far as what they recommend for you to drink and not drink. And also we tell people to drink a lot of coconut water and drink a lot of water in general. Um, and then you know, that balances things out. Okay. Uh, would, okay. You mentioned to bring uh, mostly large bills. Would you all accept tra traveler's checks? Uh, no. You're gonna bring. You want to bring the 100 and the 50 because of the denomination. The exchange rate is 4.7 to 1, meaning for 100 US you get 407 Ghana CDs. If you were to give a 10 or 20 dollar bill, someone may offer you a shorter, smaller denomination of 4.4. It absolutely makes no sense, and that is one of the only countries I've ever seen that rule be applied to. Um, everywhere else I went of lately. Togo, Benin, Brazil, Ethiopia, you know, exchange was exchange. Uh, but that's something, that, you know, that's one of those scams that they got going on in Ghana. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's set that way, so it's something, it's something enough us can change. So we just usually just give people a heads up on, you know, that aspect of things. You know, it's kind of like one of those unique things in that culture, just like other things in other culture. But that's one of the things that's going on now. 50 to 100 to get the best uh, exchange rate. Okay, uh, would there be a, a refrigerator in the rooms? Mickelon Hotel in Accra is a refrigerator. In Kumasi, there's a refrigerator. Takarati is a refrigerator. And if I put you at a Carrick Hotel, I'd have to check. But one Africa doesn't have any fridge in the room. But if that's a request that you need, I can work it out with the other hotel. Or if you need medicine store or anything, you can let us know. Yes. This is Carolyn and and Fatima. Yes, from and my I know you mentioned uh, earlier that some of the rooms did not have AC. Yes. We would like to have a room with AC in it. All right, perfect. Yeah, and it's not some of the rooms. It's only one part of the itinerary. Just everyone is listening. Um, the last three days, we have a hotel split, and it's, you know, it's walking distance. One Africa is the hotel we've been using since we've been going there, 
and she don't have any AC or hot water or fridge or anything like that. But um, just like um, just like Fatima and uh, Carolyn is letting me know that they that's what they need. The same I'm asking everybody to do that way. When I'm putting the things on the spreadsheet to put individuals in different places, I'm clearing those things. So definitely thank you for the heads up. I'll make sure we take care of that for you. Okay. 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 Uh, what about Wi-Fi? All right, uh, would Wi-Fi. we be able to use our Would we be able to use our uh, phones uh, over there? Yes. Uh, perfect. Uh, great question. Now, as far as um, when you get to um, the first two hotels are staying at is in Miklin and Accra and Kumasi, and you'd be able to use the uh, Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi works definitely better in the lobby area than in some rooms. Like usually, my room is usually far away from the main base of the. The Wi-Fi. So in that case, you can just log on to the Wi-Fi network, and then you can use your apps on your phone. Now, as far as for those who want to make phone calls, uh, you can use WhatsApp to make phone calls. But um, you naturally need an unlocked phone, and then you have to get a Ghana SIM card, and then you can purchase minutes like five or ten CDs to make phone calls. Um, and that's what I use um, when I'm doing Ghana. I use both systems. I use my US phone, and also use. Uh, my uh, Ghana phone to make uh, phone calls. But as far okay. As, uh, um, on another question, on the uh, list of things to bring, you said to bring a, a, a converter or a foreign uh, adapter. Okay, do some of the travelers uh, leave their converters there with you because they won't be using them again? Oh yeah, you, can, you know, uh, for the next group to use. And no, unfortunately, the people will keep their stuff because once people start traveling with us, it gets it gets addicted, so they start going to many other places, and they usually need the same thing. But um, yeah, just recommend um, in 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 the case that we're in now, uh, all of your phones, your laptop, all your mobile devices, tablets, um, I'm trying to see anything else I can think of. Uh, camcorder, camera, they all have a 110 to 220 volt switch to where wherever you go, it will automatically convert. And it, that has been a standard because people are blowing stuff all the time when they take it to other countries. So now when you, so the only thing that you need that I usually recommend is just, you know, one or two adapters, which are universal adapters. So that means they can fit any wall socket in the world. And then the next thing is a universal extension cord uh, to where you have the different sockets to where they fit different styles. And both of those go perfect together. No matter where you go in the world, they will work together. You always be able to charge up your, you know, charge up your devices. So I just recommend, that's one of the things I recommend. Okay, I have looked around in different uh, stores and I see the prices range from nine ninety nine to seventy nine ninety nine. What's a good price range to get one? Uh twenty five dollars. Uh last one a few of us purchased, uh can I usually find new ones to let people know about um was on Amazon it was like twenty five bucks and it came with the adapter I talked about, it came with the, the extension cord and it was just like, you know, a nice little small nice little package. The tour registrations, okay, you already have all of us uh, registered to go, correct? Yes, exactly, and I sent you a copy of the the actual confirmed flight schedule for you to get your visa and for you to be clear on the flights that you're going to be, you know, your flight schedule in general. Okay. Okay, thank you. If I have any more questions, I'll call you. Uh, perfect, and uh, yeah, and this, um, if you don't see that message, just uh, give me a reminder. I'm just right now, all of these things to take care of them. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, excellent. Uh, you're welcome. All right. I uh, apologize if I miss anyone. Um, if I miss you uh, earlier, if you can just um, unmute yourself back and uh, just uh, give us your name and where you're calling from, your question. Hello. Uh, greetings. Yeah, this is Bill from um, Indiana again. Uh, I was listening to, you know, other people with their questions, so that sparked other questions in my mind. 
So ahead. you're saying we should bring plenty of cash. Is that saying that our Visa or credit or debit cards won't be able to be used over there? No, I'm not saying that. Um, I've used every single method, and I just recommend bring as much cash as you need. So, like, example, bring $1,000, and if you go over your budget for shopping, uh, we're – the hotel is right there by the mall in Accra and Kamachi. And then Cape Coast and Takarati, we have close access to ATM machines. So you have access to that every day. In order to convert the money, can you use your credit, debit, or visa, or whatever you have to convert money? No? Exactly. exactly. So once you go to the ATM machine, uh, the country is not equipped to give you U.S. dollars, so they're going to give you local CDs, and then your bank and their bank is going to work out the conversion and the transfer. Um, but you'll be able to get uh, Ghana CDs right there. And then, you know, just like when you exchange your money, you'll be able to get Ghana CDs. So it's just, you know, one-step process. You mean at the uh, ATM I can exchange monies? Yes, at the ATM you can get Ghana CDs, which is the only currency they give you. And then a uh, money exchanger uh, got you, to, you know, it can exchange your bills. So you want to do it both ways or either or. You know, we, we have you covered. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also I see that some, I don't know, a particular hotel or all hotels may not have hot water all day or... One African resort does not have hot water. So I'm always trying to get, get it out there, one or two conference calls, as much conference call as possible. For those who want hot water in the last three days and want AC and want a fridge or anything like that, to let me know up front that way I can put them in the other hotel, which is called a Carrick Hotel. It's right across the street from One Africa. Um, One Africa is just a beachfront resort that's based on natural elements, not having an AC in the room, not having a TV, not having Wi-Fi and things like that. So that's why we always offered another hotel with the standard things that they'll get in the first three hotels. Right. Now, are we allowed to carry these little small personal fans with us? I know you can get those here. You can bring, you know, one of, one of those carry fans. That's absolutely fine. You know, just do what you have to do to make yourself comfortable. It's not, it's not a problem. Okay. And what's the average temperature over there during that time? Uh, doing our tours, uh, both of them, you're looking at anywhere from um, mid-70s to mid-80s. And it's a nice Oh, place. that's kind of mild. Oh, that's kind of mild. Okay. And so you say bring, we can bring our own mosquito repellent, you say? Uh, yes. Um, anything over three ounces, what you want to do is put it in your check bags. You can bring, uh, bring something cinchonella base. that's an excellent uh, mosquito repellent. What do you recommend? Cinchonella base. I don't have a recommendation. I don't really buy <laughs> mosquito spray. Now, some of the things I recommend, I don't honestly get them or buy them or do them. It's just for the fact that, you know, we're in business to let other people know. I just feel like when I leave from here and I walk across the garden, it's like walking home. And I don't need any, I don't need any malaria pill. I don't need any updated uh, yellow fever. I don't need, you know, I'm fine. And just like the trip I just came back on, I was fine. I'm not, you know, just, I think also the body get used to a climate and that helps also. And you, but I just kind of follow my own rules, and that's I'm usually fine. Okay, okay. But everything in the check bag has to be three ounces or less. Okay. Um, everything in your uh, carry-on bag has to be three ounces or less. But in the check bag, it can be more. Yeah, your check bag you can bring, you can bring whatever liquid you need to bring. I wouldn't recommend a whole bunch of liquid in your check bag. Okay, and you mentioned about donating to schools, so we can bring, like, pencils, paper, notebooks, et cetera. Yeah, exactly. You can just bring um, as much school supplies as possible. There's three schools that we have, and it's just... Okay. All right, family, um, we're going to close. If there's someone that had a few questions uh, that, didn't, um, that didn't get a chance to ask a question, uh, right now is the perfect time. All right, other than that, all right, so family, uh, once again, this is Bomani Tamba. I'm your tour organizer and tour leader for 2019 Journeys to Africa, uh, Ghana, and South Africa. So everyone, um, 
if you have any uh, questions, um, just uh, send me an email, a text, or just communicate with me, and we can talk. Uh, other than that, I'll work on editing of the uh, conference call and get it out for those who can make it or those who can listen to the whole call. All right, so family, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, you take care. I'm just going to unmute everyone. Yeah, it's just a email. Right Everyone, uh, good night. Uh, good night. Take care. Hey, good night, brother.